So how the microbes in your gut end up there and what they do all goes back to the events that occur quite soon after we're born. So we're born sterile and depending on the environment in which we're born and the route by which we are born, that dictates the type of microbes that will colonize our, colonize our body. So for example, if you were born in a hospital and you have a vaginal birth, then that would be very different than if you were born at home, um, even though it's the same route of, of passage for the, for the newborn. And also, if you're born by cesarean section in a hospital, you get exposed to different types of microbes than if you were born through a vaginal birth. And basically, the mother is the primary donor of the microbes that initially colonize you. And then, depending on whether or not you are bottle-fed or breastfed, if you have to receive antibiotics for anything, all these things will impact on the microbes that will colonize your body. And the colonization occurs over a period of about three years. So once that three-year time point is reached, you essentially have the population of microbes that will stay with you for the virtually the rest of your life. So there are other factors which can perturb that balance in microbes throughout your adult life. So, for example, diet. So if you go on a diet and you drastically change the types of foods you eat, then that obviously impacts on the microbes because they're reliant on what you eat for their own survival and growth. So by changing your diet, you change the microbes. However, what's interesting, it seems that that ch change in response to diet is only temporary. So as soon as you stop the diet, you, the microbes that were there originally before you went on the diet come back. So that's only temporary. Perhaps the most profound effect on your microbes in the gut is through antibiotics. So if you receive a long dose of antibiotics for an infection of some description, they can actually permanently remove or destroy some beneficial microbes in your gut. And the thing to remember is that not all the microbes that are in your gut are beneficial. The vast majority are, but they also, it also harvests or contains microbes that have the potential to become pathogens, cause injury, cause disease. And the best example of that is Clostridium difficile. So that is present in a large proportion of us. We're all healthy. It's held and kept under control by all the other good microbes. If we receive a, pro a course of antibiotics, so we go to hospital, we get antibiotics. If we lose enough of our good bacteria, Clostridium difficile can grow, grow, an increase in number, and then it causes uh, a quite severe, but sometimes lethal infection. So antibiotics is one way in which the microbiota, your microbes, can be changed permanently. So could having too many antibiotics cause any? The link there is unproven, but we know that changing a, a protracted course of antibiotics may or may not be linked to ME, but it could be linked to other diseases which are we think triggered by changes in the makeup of your gut microbes. So a good example is inflammatory bowel disease and maybe even colon cancer. So if you change your microbes and you have an underlying susceptibility to developing those diseases, then the disease can become apparent very quickly and it become very aggressive and very severe. So the link to ME is unproven, but it's entirely possible if the gut is the origin of ME.